Good morning, everyone. We are so thrilled that you guys are joining us for this session of Working Moms, How We Show Up and Show Out. Um, Leah and I are thrilled to be here and we're going to get started. So today you'll be hearing from uh, four mom entrepreneurs who share their life experiences and give great advice along the way. Please stay afterwards for a few Q for Q and A with a few of the ladies from our panel. But without further ado, please enjoy Working Moms: How We Show Up and Show Out. Good morning, thank you for joining us. I'm Katie Hendricks, the Chief of Staff at CoLab here in Chattanooga, and the mama to a wonderful and exhausting two and a half year old river. <laughs> and I'm Leah Kimbrough. I am the Events and Outreach Manager for the Enterprise Center, and I am the mother of a gorgeous little daughter named Zendaya, who's just turned 18 months. I heard a quote once that being a working mom is like being everywhere and nowhere at once. The pull of two worlds and the responsibility of both is pretty overwhelming. Working full time at home plus a toddler at home that can only do the basic things without your assistance is not possible. So even saying that out loud, I feel like I should caveat it and say I can do it. But it's those conversations with other moms that has led us to this day. We wanted to share an opportunity with these other women to share their stories so you can hear what it's like that other women are doing this and that you also know that you're valuable, you're capable, and you're not struggling alone. Your success in this challenge matters. So thank you for joining us as we hear from these women and how they've shown up and shown out. So when we say showing up and showing out, what exactly does that mean? Well, when you show up, you step into any situation and you are confidently and boldly present. And when you show out, you captivate those around you and you, you have a powerful impression and you leave them wanting more. So these women do just that and that's why we invited them today on our panel. The work these ladies do in the community, it is captivating. And I'm pretty sure after you hear their stories and a little bit of their life experiences, you're gonna want to know a little bit more about them too. So we're gonna start doing just that. And we'll start with Miss Brianna Garza. We're gonna get your name, even though I just said it. <laughs> um, and if you own a business or you own a organization, or if you do a hybrid of both, how many kids you have, and either tell us about your morning, getting ready today with your little one, or tell us a funny story of something that happened with your child during a Zoom call. Oh, goodness. Let's see if I can catch all that. In I know. The I'll help you back. Well, I'm Brianna Garza. I am the owner and co-founder of Chat Taste Food Tours. Um, I also own an Airbnb company, and I teach the intro to Airbnb um, with the Chattery here in Chattanooga. Um, good night. Funny story with my eight-year-old, Constance, who will be watching this. So I'm going to tailor this because I don't, <laughs> I'm going to hear about sure. it later. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so funny story this morning with Constance. Uh, we check the weather together, mind you, and it's 54 degrees, and sister comes downstairs with biker shorts and Doc <laughs> Martens, all right? And we have developed this relationship where we kind of communicate without speaking. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the shorts, and I, I squinted a little bit, and she knew. So she went upstairs, she changed her clothes, and what I appreciate now um, with having a third grader, I can't believe I have a third grader at CSAS now, um, is the independence. You know, we have this relationship where we understand each other on a, an intimate level where we don't even have to talk and we know how each other are feeling. We know what boundaries we need to set. Um, so yeah, uh, between the biker shorts <laughs> and trying to manage like her schedule and mine, like every morning is crazy in our house. Love it. Uh, last night's dishes are still in the sink. It's, it's, a, it's a wreck, but we're, we're pleased. We're happy. We're healthy. And that's all we can ask for. I love it. I love it. And also, my name is Gisela Bolina, and I'm the co-owner of the local juicery and kitchen, the local Paletas, Squeaky Clean, and I also work at Blue Cross in Bushilla, Tennessee. I'm a project manager there. Yeah. And some of you know, I have a four-and-a-half-year-old daughter and a one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Ariana and Valentina, 
and to share something fun and I guess really sweet earlier today um, so my youngest my one and a half year old um, had her world checkup today and I had a really early meeting for work so I couldn't make it so my husband he's a great husband he said don't worry I'll take her to the doctor and of course she's getting shots you guys know like the 18 month old checkup is not a fun one right horrible and my four year and a half year old daughter she was like mommy don't worry I'm also gonna go with daddy and sister I want to hold her hand and then we can just both go to school together. That just broke my heart. <laughs> so that's one of the little things that, you know, it's like, well, it's rough because, you know, when you also do other stuff and you have work and you have a family, you have to balance it and you're not, sometimes you're going to miss some things and, and just got to learn how to deal with that. But, you know, a moments like that, that it also makes you feel grateful for your family. You know, like you said, we're healthy, we're, we're together. Yeah. There are little things that happen. It's not perfect in the mornings. It's chaotic, but, you know, we're making it each other like with each other you know yeah, really yeah. it's another thing so yeah well, i'm sharon green i am the <laughs> owner and founder of professional cleaning solutions i also work in operation services at tbl uh associates and i am also six classes away from mastering it oh um, yeah three <laughs> yes my oldest two are my bonus babies they were wedding gifts so my children are 19 16 and 6 but they are my babies so there's no distinction to them and i guess the funny story was the pep talk my six-year-old gave me on the way over here. So I dropped him off. He's not in school. We um, found a retired teacher that he has a small little co-op with the three or four friends. And um, they learned perseverance, initiative, and another word last week. I can't remember that word. And I should remember because he's been using it all weekend. <laughs> so he said, well, mommy, today, when you go on your panel, make sure you use initiative. And I'm like, what, is you, what does it mean? Right. And he actually knows what it means. Oh. And he knows how to say it back. And another funny thing is that he waits for you to ask him how his day was, and his answer always is average. It was just average. So, um, and as well as all you guys say, I got laundry piled up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something else. The dishes were done last night because when my 16 year old got work, he surprised me and he washed the dishes. But everybody's living, everybody's thriving, and I can wear the clothes out the laundry basket. They'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my name is Steele Tebow, and I'm the director of Glass House Collective. We're a nonprofit working in East Chattanooga. Um, I would say that's my first baby. Um, that was that was founded in back in 2012, um, and then I had another baby, a real baby, um, and she's two and a half. Um, and her name is Zoe. And she is a hot mess. She will tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this morning, she, um, I have lots of Zoom stories. Um, yeah, I think the some. Zoom stories oh, yeah. maybe are better for some of my staff to share. Um, <laughs> bless them. <laughs> um, but something sweet that happened this morning was that uh, I had a workshop for work all day on Saturday. And then um, Sunday was also very busy catching up on the Saturday things. And so this morning, she's now out of her crib. She's been for a while, so she's in her own bed. And when she, she wakes up sometimes before I do. Cheers. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. she walks into okay. my room and says, Mommy, are you still tired? And I said, I am. And she said, Okay, I'll be right back. She went to the kitchen, got her cup of some dried mango and Cheerios, came back in the bed, said, I'll hang out with you, Mommy, while you keep rest. So she is a very independent um, but strong willed child. Um, I appreciate all the help that she um, kind of does on her own but then sometimes it's difficult when it's like okay it's time to leave the playground and she's like no I own this playground <laughs> um so it's a hard balance but like mornings like this morning was very nice to get a little bit more shut eye with her yeah, helping she's out two and a half. she's two and a half That's she's so sweet. Have a year left for that okay just yeah count down <laughs> one question um that we thought of and just top of mind is the pandemic has changed life for everyone over the last seven months so if y'all don't mind answering, this will just be pot, kind of popcorn. I mean, how has it changed your business? How has it changed juggling working from home plus homeschooling? Um, and really, how do you balance being a working mom? And, and one last question we can tackle on that, but is just any high level tools or resources that you've used. Um, I know that just as we've thought about this panel, and as I mentioned, like that's a conversation that I've had with so many moms on like, are you really juggling? Probably not. Like <laughs> it's not really juggle, but we're all doing it. Yeah. Um, so we'd love to hear. So just anyone can go. You're doing it. I don't mind starting. Great. Um, I just believe in full transparency. And that's one thing I appreciate about this pandemic is because um, 
people are being more transparent and honest and raw. And it's okay that, you know, your business isn't meeting those those metrics. Um, Chat Taste specifically, we went about two and a half months, forget profit, no revenue at all. Mm. And it was scary, you know? What do you do when your, your business isn't producing? Um, you have to be, you have to be still. And what I appreciate is how forthcoming, you know, other moms were, other small businesses were in Chattanooga. Um, so that's why I'm so appreciative of being a small business owner here because people are going to come to you and offer so many resources that you didn't even know were available. Um, and that's what uh, Chat Taste went through. Uh, we went through we went, our peak. We launched uh, last September, you know, and immediately went into a, a pandemic. And for a small business, the first year is rough right. by itself. Yeah. You throw a pandemic in there, you're almost guaranteed to fail. And I think the community showed up for us. You know, we, we couldn't do tours. It wasn't safe. And we were fine with that. We weren't willing to risk anyone's safety before um, the parameters were set in place, the CDC and Tennessee pledge guidelines. Um, but I'm, I'm glad we waited. I'm glad we were patient. And I'm glad, like, the community showed up for us because now we're thriving during the pandemic. I think a bit of that, too, is being okay with asking for help. Absolutely. And I... I I think that this pandemic has allowed us, I think maybe we've, like grace has been a yeah. common theme, right? Um, so there's some of that grace, but then asking for help and then just, yeah, leaning on, you know, that village. We always talk about, you know, you don't raise a child alone, you raise with a village, but then at the end of the day, it's like, well, how much of that village really helped you this past week? Like you did everything or like right. you or your husband did everything. I mean, and so with, I think with the pandemic, it was definitely like all hands on deck in the safest way possible. Um, and, you know, my parents are older, so I was worried about having them watch Zoe at the beginning of all of this. So that was kind of thrown out the window. And then um, her daycare, we stopped that. And so right. it was, yeah, it was just full time, just her and I, you know, and it was, um, I think everyone else was dealing with the same thing. And so it was yeah. just kind of like, it became a strange new normal mm -hmm. um, in, in a way, though, that lowered expectations, I think, that maybe we all had on one another, on each other. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, I have high expectations for myself. Right. Um, and I was able to take this down a notch yeah. and then kind of extend grace to some of my staff, but then also friends. I mean, we were all just kind of navigating this together. I will say that I've, I've noticed it's been a little bit more tough since school started. I don't know if you guys noticed that where it does definitely feel like, oh, no, you need to have it all together. Like, the corona is over. <laughs> yes. um, how, you know, <laughs> why don't you have this all figured out? And um, I have noticed that there's been a bit of an imbalance there. Um, but I get it. It's, it's also trying to navigate how to send your kids back to school and deal with working from home. And so we're all balancing so much. But I agree with Bree. I, I think that, you know, asking for help and, and receiving help and being in Chattanooga at this time was really helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not easy. And the question of like how you're doing it. I mean, I don't know if I'm doing it. I think we're, we're kind of learning as we go, right? You're and, doing it girl. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> That's all you can do. I can say for me, um, the like March was scary for mm -hmm. business because I'm going, we're into our, we, we had two years, June 26th which is my brother's birthday, which is crazy. But um, the first month, like when they started, like the sh shelter in place, we cleaned. So like almost immediately all of our residential clients mm -hmm. were like paused. And then even our commercial clients, because we were sheltering in place, they weren't using their commercial spaces. There was no reason to get them clean. And so I immediately just became nervous. Like, what am I going to do? I got employees that rely on me. I got 25 plus employees. They have to work. They have to take care of their families. Like, what are we going to do? And then... um. The, pan, the, the tornado happened yeah. and oh, yeah. it's crazy that like I was like I was sitting there worried and stressed about this pandemic and what are we going to do and then this tornado happened and then the phone started ringing so crazy because property management started calling they had to get all these places clean for these people that are displaced to be moved in and we haven't slowed down since then like it's been non-stop mm -hmm. So even though a lot of companies were working from home, they still wanted to be sanitized and disinfecting for the couples, couple of people that just have to be in the office. Right. And so then we went from like an office space that we might have cleaned once or twice a week. Now they want us to come every day. 
So we have been prospering in a pandemic. That's my hashtag because we have not slowed down. I have an ad out on Indeed. I have an ad out on Facebook. It's kind of hard to find people right now, but we've been tremendously busy. Um, I was doing it. Um, I think I put it on Instagram a couple months ago. I just did an analysis of where our sales were in um, August of last year compared to this year. And they're saying most, most small businesses, you'll see a 5% 10% increase. And we had a 35% increase wow. just over last yeah, year already. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I know. Ooh, Two like, years old. That's okay. incredible. Because I yeah. was nervous. <laughs> but um, it's been insane. It has. Yeah. And as far as like when, when March happened and my son, you know, I'm, He's my miracle baby. I'm big on he's not going outside. He's not going anywhere. It was hard because I have to work and, and he's boy. in all my Zooms <laughs> asking for Z-Bucks and, <laughs> and can he play Roblox? I'm like, shh, quiet, quiet. And then trying to get him on his Zoom calls, he was not about, he loved his kindergarten teacher. He loved face-to-face, but he hated the Zooms yeah. because, oh, and what he mostly hated was the lag and the communication because he would say something to her and she couldn't hear him. He's like, why can't she hear me? So I have a picture of him with this laptop and he's sitting there like, because he didn't like it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I was talking to you about it. I was like, yeah. I know I have something that I have to do, but I can't continue to mm-hmm. focus on working and a business and trying to teach him, right. you know, what two times four is. And so that's what me and a group of friends came together and we found a retired teacher. We're like, you want some extra money? Can you do this? You know, facilitate the classes. And he loves it because yeah. now he's back around kids. He's not around me every day. Yeah. And I'm not around him all day because I need a few, a little break too. Mm-hmm. But he's back to being, even though it's a small amount, he has kids that he can interact with because I was really Kalis is a um, very shy child when he was before kindergarten and I was really worried about him losing those social skills with us being in the house for so long and like we don't go to birthday gardens we don't we stay in the house and for him to be six he's happy with being in the house he's like no, I just want to relax. I'm like, who is this baby to year old man that I'm dealing with? I'm like, I just want to relax. And as far as like how, um. We eat, <laughs> everybody's clean and living. And I think before that, it used to bother me because I'm like kind of OCD about things. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. So and now I'm just happy that yeah. we're alive. Like, yeah. Because if you put it in context yeah, to what so everything so. is, you know, and for somebody like me that's like really a um, perfectionist in some areas about stuff, like when things fall through the loop, it bothers me. And then I just had to like have a come to Jesus meeting around June and July was just the, you know, us not being able to go on vacation. So we're all stuck in this house together and we're like seeing each other more than we want to see each other. And, and I just finally said, you know what? We're living, we're eating, we're thriving. Nobody's hurt. We haven't caught Corona. That's all you can ask for right now. You can just, just be grateful, count your blessings and just be happy. And those, if you know, the laundry stay in the laundry room. It's yeah. clean. It's clean. Look, listen, the fact that I one. remember to take it out the washer before two or three days. <laughs> I know. Before yeah. we I'm, I want, I'm, I'm winning. Back. Back. Yeah. I'm winning. Who so, does fold know. their laundry and clean up? I mean, my husband. you do. Well, he is, he's good. military, prior military, and so he he wash, dry, fold. I don't know wow. how that happens. Yes. It's never happened in my life. <laughs> I can't do it, but he does. Wow. And so, yeah. It's amazing. Mine will stay in the laundry until it's time to wash again, and I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. Justin Wilson, if you're watching this. <laughs> Justin Wilson. <laughs> we need to talk. Right, <laughs> right. Let's be specific. He wash folds his oh. and Kayla's. Oh, he yeah. doesn't touch mine. <laughs> okay. I'm so cool with that, because I feel like Kayla's has 100 pieces of clothes to go nowhere. Yeah. But just like you said with yours, he came out the other day, a hoodie. Basketball shorts, Nike slides, and was like, "Let's go." Where are you going? <laughs> like it's fifty three degrees outside, sir. Where we? Where, put some socks are on. Are your bottoms not going? <laughs> what about yeah. you, Giselle? <laughs> so it's been a struggle. I mean, it definitely. I don't, I'm glad we kind of made it through most of it. Still going, but um, I think when everything just started um, back in March, I was not expecting what actually was going to happen afterwards, right? And I don't think anybody was. Um, I remember one Friday um, through Blue Cross, they were like, well, you guys are not coming more to the office. Make sure you come get your computer and your stuff. You're going to start working from home. So nobody really had answers on how long this is going to go for. Um, my husband is the one that is more involved into the businesses that we own since I work full time as well. But then, of course, my kids' school, um, their daycares were, you know, they canceled them. So I went into panic mode. I'm like, well, what are we going to do? Because, yes, a lot of what I do throughout my day is being on conference calls or, web, you know, WebEx and Zoom videos. So, like, how am I going to handle that with a one-and-a-half-year-old and a four-and-a-half-year-old? 
and then my husband of course were really it wasn't easy all around because then through the businesses through the local i mean we had to let go a lot of our employees because of our cut down hours and then of course my husband had to be you know involved there every single day because luckily we didn't have to close down but you know he had to put more and more work and be present and do a lot more stuff to make sure things kept moving so that meant me being at home with the kids and then we finally I had a conversation. My husband was like, "Well, why don't you go drive down to Florida with the kids? Like, stay with my parents." So I stay with my in-laws, and I thought, "Okay, well, that sounds like a good idea. You know, they were from home; they can help us, and it's going to be good for the kids. We like they miss them so much." So I pack our stuff, thinking, "Well, this is probably going to be you know one, two weeks most, right?" I don't know what really happened through my mind. I don't think I was really thinking it straight. So we packed some stuff, and you know, we hopped in a car and drove for eight. Hours really turned into like almost twelve hours, right. you know, having frequent yeah, showers. Sure. Yeah. So we made it there, and you know, three months later, we're still there. Oh, wow. So that was really rough. We had to stay. You know, my husband stay here in Chattanooga, and we were there. I was there with the kids, and it was rough. And and even I had to help. I still, they still need at me. You know, they still want it. And like you said, funny stories. I was still like in WebExes, and then suddenly my like one and a half year old would just run and jump into the call and be like, "Mommy." And pulling my shirt because she wanted to feed, and I was like, "Okay, that is not appropriate right now." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, we're trying just to make it yes. work. And my other kid just saying, "Mommy, can I? Can you can I watch this? Mommy, can I do this?" And I'm just like, "Well, you know, it's it is what it is." And you say, well, "I wasn't the only person kind of going through that. We we're all going through it." So I think it was great to really learn a little more. Um, it gave us time to spend time together. I think it straightened my relationship with my husband as well. You know, having to be in a yeah. part and and kind of each of us carried our own way. He stayed here. He stayed here. It was it was hard. Yeah. I mean, we're yes. we're finally together and and it's been great since. Um, but we're still it's still rough. You know, even though my girls are back into daycare now, but every day it's unknown because you don't know when. You know, tomorrow they'll go ahead and have to close it down again, and and we'll go back to that. But I think. We're stronger as a family, as I'm sure all of you guys are too. So we learn a lot from each other, and you know, it's what we can hope for. So yeah, um, my laundry takes a week. <laughs> I start one Monday and Sunday night next week. Like I'm still like doing it, you know. But hey, I wish I could say a week. We do our best. <laughs> you know? We can always in the bank of my I can wash dry, but the folding just the, or and hanging up, it just doesn't. So COVID has been, made it better because I don't have to wear business clothes. And so it's just t-shirts and sweats mm -hmm. and tights. So, mm -hmm. but it's still a lot of t-shirts, sweats and tights. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's interesting um, what you, I mean, kind of we've all touched on a little bit of that relaxing and the standards that we held, you know, we held ourselves to. I know for me, it was like, I had never really been at home and like, I was never a stay-at-home mom. I mean, my son went to daycare when he was about five and, home, five and a half months old. So those first couple of days, I was like, okay, we FaceTime with grandma. We've tried to make muffins. It's, you know, we went outside and it's 930. Like, <laughs> not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. And, but then I also, yep. in the same time, you know, my boss might have called in the midst of that. And I was on a walk outside. And he was like, what about that? And I'm like, okay, yeah. And so... I think that that standard of having to realize like, okay, I probably got to get up at six to work on my emails before he wakes me up singing and yelling mama. And then I also just need to give grace that like, yeah, maybe I'm wearing sweatpants on the bottom for my, you know, zoom top up top, you know, and I'm just going with it. So I think the giving us grace has been one thing that I have like really leaned into in a way that I didn't know I was a perfectionist in, in certain areas. So, but it's been, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead, please. I feel like the grace thing, though, is really beneficial when you have mom supporting you in that yeah, space. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Because you can say, yeah, I've extended grace. You can say it and then not do it. Right. But when your friends are calling, checking on you, when you're talking to them and they're like, hold on, I can't because my baby's pulling me and then I've got to call. And then it's just like the, the, there's so much support um, by way of mothers, and you don't you don't even realize it until you take a step back and realize that wow, you know, a bunch of my friends or even coworkers or employees have been so supportive in this time, and so that like extending grace also then turns into a lot of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I heard a little bit of that, like even yeah. out of your story, 
like there's you're you're so thankful that you're back with your husband that your family's stronger and I think that's also really special and it's maybe a I think that's a woman thing. I think that that's us supporting one another, and that's really special, um, especially during this time. I'm motivated right now, listening to everyone's story. Like I'm, le- like this made my day, and it's going to be a trickle down effect. You know, I think right. I think of myself in like kind of three micro environments. You know, if the way I take care of myself reflects how I re- present my family, and if my family is well, the customer is happier because I'm a better businesswoman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this in itself is going to be prosperous for the company because, God, this, these are three humans that I admire, humans. These are three women <laughs> I admire. And you, guys, you. you guys are killing it. <laughs> like, I am honored to be on this stage with you guys right now. Like, I'm about to cry. No, that's a woman thing, too. Don't do it. I think I'm going to cry more through COVID than, than I have in life. Like, when it first started. Because you have a six-year-old, and so essentially, my son's birthday is on my father's birthday. So we went down to Montgomery. They always spend their birthdays together. So we shot down to Montgomery, and when we came back, everything was closed down. Mm-hmm. And we went from having a great birthday weekend, so you can't go to school Monday, mm-hmm. and oh, by the way, same as you guys, they were like, "Hey, come get your laptops and your batteries and whatever else you want off your workstations." And I'm like, "Oh, it'll be a week or two. I never thought that we would still be working from home this mm-hmm. long. And I'm like. You have the other little person that now just his kindergarten years, his he wants it's this big. Oh, no. He missed yeah. it. He missed his little graduation. And so luckily they mm-hmm. did something and they did like a drive through graduation. So because I'm the overtop mom, I got these huge banners on like <laughs> quarantine oh, years really? the kid. Really? Oh, we had to I'm do just kidding. I know, I know. And, and like so I got these banners on the side of our car and he's got this little Captain Gallant t shirt that says, I made it through. <laughs> but like his emotional, you know all of our emotions and then I'm in the house with these people longer than I'm normally in the house with these people and they just started like you started seeing their personalities more and you're like oh I just wish I could go outside for a minute can I just I need a moment away just from all of it because I it's probably wasn't recommended but for me to be able to function at work and I think I told you this I started letting him sleep in as late as his older brothers and sisters were so like he would wake up about two so all my work was done and then we would work on work but that means he stayed up all night, and that was my sacrifice because before that, when he was up, when I was up, I couldn't get anything done. Mm-hmm. I want some grits, can I have some fruit loops, can you make some muffins, I want some pancakes. It was just hard. So for a long time, we were on, I was letting him be on third shift, like, be up all night. <laughs> that way you sleep in so I can at least yeah. get like five hours of solid work done. That's the trick. And I, you know, because he's, like you said, your child, my six, so he knows how to go in and grab a Lunchable and some juice. And I mean, it was plenty of nights when he wanted to co sleep. That I would wake up and he's just chumping on a lunchable and some Doritos. He's got his word on the side of bed. And I'm like, you good? All right, I'm going back to sleep. Mm-hmm. And that's just how we did it for a long time. Oh. Yeah. It's real. So I'm going to change gears a little bit with Brianna. And chat taste being a social thing, pe- bringing people together around the table to eat. How do you see the new way of gathering impacting that? And how do you have to pivot to thrive now that you're your business opened up again. You've got people booking tours. How does that look for you now? Um, completely different. Well, it doesn't look the way I envisioned the company to look. Um, it's actually sim- similar in a lot of ways. Uh, one thing that Chat Case always wanted to exemplify is because um, having that small group, establishing that rapport with your guy, getting to know the chef. And you, c- you couldn't do that in large groups prior to COVID. Um, so having small group tours and building on that dynamic um, was, you know, right in line with who we were as a company to begin with. Yeah. But we learned so much. Uh, we, I don't consider myself a very tech savvy person, but I, I mean, I'm so proud that we were able to pivot in a way to start offering virtual experiences and it all boiled down to listening to the customer. I can't tell you how many times I had a a, a request for an experience via email and I said, oh my gosh, that is such a good idea. We we do do that. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely, we do that today, starting now. Um, And just being open, that things can't look a certain way, you know, Um, and I think being pliable and being willing to, you know, move around and take suggestions. Um, This is not the chat taste from September 2019, um, September of 2021, it'll look different. And I'm okay with that. Um, the, the growing pains are there, but it's been a beautiful experience. Uh, we, I pride myself on being this 
service oriented business and now we're wholesalers you know we've extended chat taste and expanded our offering to we're launching next month um, a taste of chattanooga box so you get the experience you know consumer goods made in chattanooga as well as going into restaurants um restaurants that we attend are all honoring the tennessee pledge we do all patio seating but we want to honor that that guest that person that wants to support local businesses but is not comfortable coming out of the house just yet and those came from suggestions from others you know well why don't you do this absolutely if it makes sense and it's it's brand loyal um i think authenticity is like blood in the water you know um i'm proud to say that we didn't pivot fast our pivot took about three months but i'm proud of it it's something that i can say makes sense for for what chat taste is what um, the brand means to to us and i think um it's reflected well and the, the cells are it's, it's doing better that's awesome i love how you said you're true to yourself and yeah. staying true to but you're easy you're you're, you're pivoting, you're changing the way you do things, but it's not taken away from who, why you built Chat Taste. And I love that. Oh, love for that. sure. Like, stay open to suggestions, but it's like, I'm still going to stay true to who I am. That's so important. You have to stay grounded. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, so, Gisela, um, you're in a unique position with two young daughters, of you, as you mentioned, working full-time, also mentioned, and then having two full-time businesses with your husband. Um, how do you see this time of life impacting women's careers and how have you juggled childcare? I mean, I, you kind of mentioned that earlier being with your in-laws. So I think it's definitely changed us all. Right. Um, it's not how I guess we were used to handling things. And just to your point, you know, it's like I was, I mean, I always have my kids in childcare and you know, it's, it's what worked for us, you know, right. and there's no shame on that. You know, right. there, it's really, you, you got to do what works for your family. Right. No family is the same. And that worked for us great. And then when we started facing these problems with no childcare and work, and I mean, it made it really hard. And I'm sure a lot of women were in the same boat. And it's like, well, how do you handle it? Because yes, you are the mom. You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be able to juggle everything. You're supposed <laughs> to be great at work, but then you're also expected to be a great mom. And you're expected to, and maybe you are also expecting yourself to be this greater being and you can be everything at once right you also gotta give yourself a break and that's hard to understand it was hard for me to understand i think it still is yeah. uh, which is why i appreciate so much my husband started this doing like a five minute session every day he will pop around lunch at my home and then he'd be like okay you ready for a five minute session and we'll just kind of like sit on the couch together and be like how are you feeling today who's well, kind of be like therapist sort of thing oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like how are you handling okay. things how are you feeling about things and <laughs> and that's really helped me and i think i know it's both ways too because you know we do it to him too so but that's i think helped me also understand it's not all perfect and i think you all need to understand that too is you're, you do the best you can to the best of your ability and that should be good you should be happy with that and if there's something you want to change we'll make it better for the next day but just keep improving gradually you know don't don't expect it all to be it's one day and then suddenly you're superwoman because unfortunately reality is not like that um you know there are days that i just want to lock myself in the closet and just you know just stay there uh, maybe like binge watch something on netflix but you know it's like i know it's like that time is going to eventually come maybe even 15 minutes you know when my kids go to bed and just have some me time but you just got to find something that will make you also happy because if you're a happier person, a happier mom, then a happier wife and a happier business owner, and a, you know, it's, it just kind of all just goes from there. So I just feel like we just all got to keep doing. We're all doing a great job, by the way. You know, just keep at it. And yeah. Yeah. Take yeah. a day at a time. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Thank you. So, is it my girl? Yes. <laughs> Teal. <laughs> Running a local nonprofit and just being a mom with a toddler. Could you share your thoughts on how the pandemic uh, impacted your work from home policy with Glass House Collective and both in your opinion on the employer as well as being a mom and working from home yourself? How do you see the policy changes in the future for working at home? Yeah, so, you know, I think I'm in a different boat than some of you guys that are working corporate, right? Um, we're a grassroots nonprofit. Um, we're scrappy and we pivot a lot 
that word, by the way. Over, <laughs> no, but, I, I, um, I we change it up a lot based <laughs> on <laughs> community needs. Um, and so, like, really quickly early on, we were doing engagement in the school. The school closed down, and we decided, after talking similar to you, Bree, about the customer, it was our customer was the art teacher in the community, right? And so that's a big customer base. Um, but we realized that we need to make sure that these kids had art supplies at home. And so our quick, very fast change was we're going to launch a campaign to make sure that every single kid at Hardy Elementary goes home um, with art supplies so that they can continue to do art. Because we didn't know, to your point, how long, you know, is this a week, three weeks, you know, until the end of the school year. Um, And so while that was unfolding, it was like, oh, well, we're going to assemble these packets together. We're going to, no, like we can't. And it was just, it was so hard for me to internalize what was actually happening. And I, I don't know if you guys do Enneagrams, but I'm a big oh, yeah. fan of them. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm a, totally I'm a full awesome. seven wing eight. And <laughs> so the seven in me is like all over the place, like so fun, ready to take on the next challenge. Um, but then realizing like, oh, like I need to sit a second and get in my feelings to understand that this is happening and unfolding around me. It's unfolding around my staff. Some staff members are having a really difficult time, rightfully so. Um, and some are also aligned with me, like, what? Are we going to get drinks tomorrow? Like, we're like, we can't, like, really actually, catch, you know, catch on to this. And so I feel like the, the, it wasn't an intended front-end policy. I didn't, you know, we didn't say, okay, does everyone have a laptop? Here's the situation. It just unfolded that way um and we I, I i think though now seeing it's interesting hearing you guys say everybody said come over and pick up all your stuff there's something positive in my mind about how quickly we all had to acclimate to this new new mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm not even gonna call it normal yeah this new new and um i think that that like the the quick swiftness of not overthinking of not like over over anything analyzing it was just like from one minute to the next we were doing this I remember an employee was like how do I download zoom talking through the downloading of zoom like what even is a zoom and then the zoom etiquette right of like muting and not muting and like so there's just there's so much yeah um to unpack there I think from a policy standpoint um you know I just want to make sure that my staff they're comfortable and I think a big part of that policy is communication and setting aside time to unpack like emotional conversations that we all have to have about how we're doing and if we glance over that and we just get into the nitty-gritty of the task those tasks are not done well and you have to reverse everything that you just did because you didn't do it with intention and and with passion you're just just churning stuff out and I think that that's the case with being parents too right it's like we can go through ABCs we can go through all these things that we're supposed to do but yeah sure they're checked off and I don't know how much Zoe actually took in but if we didn't do them together and enjoy them and go on a walk and pick up so I think from like a policy standpoint I don't know if I'm the best to speak to that because I think we're just flying by the seats for pants it's one of those like we're making it up we're learning as we're going in both my you know both professional and personal um but I think the, the key there is communication and trust like I I trust my employees if they um you know I think a lot of people are like oh working from home yeah I know what you're doing you have a kid and it's like yeah I am I'm taking a break and I'm gonna walk with Zoe uh, but I'm gonna take that phone call too while I'm walking and actually I'm gonna be more productive at t- from 10 p.m to 12 p.m and then I'm going to schedule this email to go out at 8 a.m. So you think that I've got it all together (laughs) because it's going out first thing in the morning, but I figured this out. Um, And so I think it's just, it's trust, it's grace. It's, and I think at the, I think at the core of that kind of policy question is like communication and whatever works with you and your team. I wasn't necessarily forced in this space. We did it because it was what the, what our staff wanted and we're not back in the office and a lot of our like fellow nonprofits are um and we're not in there because I'm not rushing to Bree's point earlier it, if this is working it's working right now um and so you know figuring out that balance I think is is a constant juggle but right and how are the rest of y'all are y'all liking working from home or what has it been I absolutely love it I I okay so I am a introvert, extrovert. Like I love being social. I love people, but then I also don't like people, which is, <laughs> no, is crazy. No, so like, I, I, 
found that in like corporate, I don't like the coffee talk. So in the mornings, I'm probably not the best person. Yeah. And all that short talk, I'm like, I'm just here to get my work done. I'm just here. But in social settings, I'm like a butterfly. Like, hi. And so it's kind of crazy. So I love it. I lo I drop in love. I have my drink and I'm, I get more done. I think that I find that like when you're in a working setting, because you have that coworker to want to chat all the time mm -hmm. and they don't realize that they're telling you about your day. So now I'm not working because I'm listening to you, but I'm not really seeing my nod in my head. Right. So I've lost 15 minutes versus I have nobody to talk to at home. And I'm just, I get so much done more at home. So in some ways, like our company has found some people to be very productive at mm -hmm. home. And then they found those people that's laying down, not doing anything. I'm okay to never go back into an office ever again. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I miss the interactions, but that's rare. Yeah. yeah. So Gisela, what do you think? How's it been working from home for you? So I think I really enjoy it. I am now a full-time telecommuter. Um, they ask um, a lot of people in my department if you wanted to be a full-time telecommuter. And I think by the time they did that, I kind of had already kneeled down, I had to you know, do this from home. Yeah. And I started enjoying it really good, especially now that my kids are back in school, like the whole dynamic change. Yes. So I think that really helped me understand, okay, well, yes, this is something I want. Because before then, I was associating it with no chaos and my kids and doing all this at once. But once they were back in school and I had my office set up and I mean, I really like it, you know, to your point, it's like I get a lot more done and, and sometimes like, yes, you know, I have to go pick up my kids and stuff, but then I make sure, well, there's some things that I can just, once they go to bed, you know, then I go back in the computer and I'm like doing some of the stuff that I need and kind of prep for the next day and, and I have my routine and it's working out great and, and I enjoy it and yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. I'll let, I'll, yeah. I'll let you answer too. Hello. Do, I know you kind of have your, you know, I am the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, I thrive like being in an environment and, and feeding off of others energy. Um, for anyone that knows anything about me, my second home is the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love being around people. I'm also working. So it's been rough for me. Now, I still have a, a few coffee shops that I will go to that have, are on the patio. Um, but I do. I need that interaction for my productivity. Like, it's just, it's not, it's not working for me. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see dust in the corner and I am distracted by it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, so Sharon, as a full-time business owner, full-time employee and a mom of three, um, what have you found that encourages you every day and, ha and how do you juggle your time management? Okay. So my biggest encouragement are my kids, right? Especially, um, not to take away from the older ones, but they're, cause they're working and they don't have time for me and whatever. But the youngest one is like the biggest encourager because like probably around three or four, I, he has a shirt that says boss or CEO. Mm -hmm. And so like when we first started the business, he had to be with me when I dropped off supply, you know, in the growing stages. Mm -hmm. So like now he's used to Thursday's payroll day and do we have to go drop off checks and let's go talk to the employee so he's like the biggest encourager ever and he's always I don't know where his heart comes well it comes from me of course and maybe a little his dad but he's just the most he's like mommy you can do it you're the best and then he, like I got him his oh. iPad so he can stay off mine and so he sends like little text messages and I can show y'all our text chain he's like you're the best mommy ever and I just love you so much and that is just so encouraging can he send out some daily texts I, yes. and, and he does, so and he my number. yeah <laughs> Where's his heart? Like, where do you, like, yeah. yeah. And so, like, even on the roughest day, he was like, it's okay, mommy. Tomorrow's going to be better. It's going to be fine. You're going to do great. And I'm like, you could have the V-Bucks. Get the $20 package. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, he, my kids are the biggest encouragers because I feel like they're, they see, they're seeing me. So, okay, I, I graduated with another bachelor a couple of years ago, and I was supposed to stop in. But then I had told myself that I was going to have that one done before my kid got to kindergarten. So that was the biggest encourager because he was around that curve. And in this one, I had said, well, before he gets out of first grade, and this is the last one. Um, so they, they motivate me. They encourage me. And my husband, yeah. he's always, he's so even keeled. But he's like, bro, we got to do this. You can't start something. You can't finish it. You need to know. That's his, that's his kind of talk. But, but it's always encouraging. It's always like, you know, you can do this. You can't stop. Starting working full time and starting a business, there were plenty of days I was just like, I quit. I don't know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Having kids, because like 
it's hard. There's like I'm 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 trying to like be a, a full time wife, a full time employee, a full time owner, a full time and present mom. I'm trying to drink my water, get thirty oh, yeah, minutes of steps, exercise in, in. Um, <laughs> wash my face every day. You know, time with God. It's just like where is the time? So okay. So one of the things that we kind of incorporated, and especially my husband's always cooked, but I, it's always kind of fell on me. So with this, I'm like, I need help. So there's days that he cooks. And then like for me, it's better for me to cook at night for the next day. So that helps me because when they come in at two or three o'clock or whatever time they come in, they're ready to eat. So you can't just start dinner then. So I always cook the night before. So that helps my schedule out. After I get Calyx to bed is when I do a lot of my stuff. Like it's it's QuickBooks, you know, checking my accounting, you know, books and stuff like that. Either or clocking back into work. Like last night when he was on his game, I was clocked in working and stuff like that. Um, I used to be real rigid on schedules. Like this has to be done by this is, a, and COVID has relaxed that. I'm not as heart attack mode like I used to be about stuff. So as long as they're fed, and they have clothes and stuff like that. That's the grace I've given myself. It is hard. I'm not going to lie. I don't, all these people that make you feel like the balancing is so easy and they can do, I don't, they're lying. I, I live this every day. There's sometimes that, you know, uh, my kid does not get in bed on time because I've got caught up in billing or I miss billing a client for a whole month. And of course I need the money, but I forgot because I'm trying to do Zoom calls. And so I am doing the best I can right now. Can I say I'm an expert on it? I think we're doing pretty good. Nobody's died. Nobody's been to the hospital or anything like that. Um, but so we just kind of have schedules. And now that my older two are working, you know, we used to have like, if you don't work, it's your day to wash dishes. Now both of them are working. So like, oh, now it's dishes back on me again. Jesus. <laughs> and then so here comes a six-year-old. I can help with dishes, mom. Oh, I'm like, oh. So we just kind of like, my husband works third. And so it might be that he comes pick up the child from in the afternoon. I drop off in the morning. You do pickups. And that helps because that's like a whole hour that so I'm not caught in traffic that I can do something else. Um, but I also try to like, I know that they're watching me. So it's important that, you know, I don't fall to pieces a lot because they're watching. Like, and even though that 19 year old totally acts like he's not watching, he, he watches and pays attention. And he's doing this new thing that I have no clue what it is. It's like Forex. But he's so engaged in it because he watches how me and his dad work on stuff and his mother, not taking away from her, but like he just sees us all working and what we do. So he has all his attention to that in school because he's still going to UTK at home, but he's still focused. So I, I don't have a, perfect schedule I don't the I do things that help me like Saturdays and Sundays I go ahead and shop when we do grocery shop I shop for the month because I don't have time to go through the week except for bread and milk those are things and then I got Instacart deliver them to my door leave them on the door (laughs) (laughs) that was a blessing listen you need to get here I'm gonna send you mine so you get the ten dollar off coupon like Instacart (laughs) saved my life you just go in pick what you want then you hear the doorbell ring in like two hours and you got everything you need and and before yeah oh crime and before that I you know I used to feel like I had to do everything myself like I like I think it's like embedded in women that we have to touch everything we have to do everything and I just I just had to say no I don't. Somebody else can go shopping. There's, I'd rather spend the time watching, you know, Ryan review with my son than spend two hours in a grocery store getting something. And that's just it. That's all. I don't have a, I don't have the perfect, you know, recipe, analogy, anything. I, we're just doing what we can. So I, we cook the night before. I lay out clothes the night before. I do have his lunches planned for the week. Well, his lunches are easy because all he wants is Lunchables, Doritos, yogurt, and Welch's fruit snacks because Mott's are trash. His word. Are those gummies? Not so trash. Yeah. So that's it. He eats the same. He's been eating the same thing for the last three years. That's, but that's all. That's all I have. No, it's great. Do you want to ask that last question? Yes. So, you guys pretty much gave a lot of advice during this whole conversation that I took in, and like I really appreciate. And now I'm motivated to go outside right now and do something. But if you could share one more piece of advice to the working moms watching today, what would you say to them? And it could be a. Wants to start. I don't mind starting. Um, and it's advice that I had to take for myself is to learn what self care looks like for me yes. and to give myself credit for the things I got done and not be down on myself for these ever growing to do lists. I have to done lists and I, I give myself a break. I pat myself on the back. Um, but my advice will be find what, what your self care is. You know, what works for every woman on the stage is going to be different, and that's okay. 
uh, but find what works for you and you're killing it. You're doing it, mom. Like, um, just give yourself a little bit more credit. Yes, you're killing it. I guess um, what I can say is don't be afraid to ask for help and delegate. Yeah. There's nothing wrong um, for you. You know, it's like if people ask, like they say, hey, they offer you their help, say yes. You know, for as, even if you feel like you can do it, it's one more thing that is going, one less thing that's going to be on your plate, right? So, like in my, in my case, like my husband, we're taking turns picking the girls up, dropping them off, um, you know, cooking and all those little things that, yes, I feel like, no, that's something I can do. I should be doing it. But no, hey, take a step back. You know, he can do it too, you know, <laughs> and he's offering, so why not? Yeah. You know, it's like if you have family that live close by and they want to help out, even if it's like an hour of daycare, you know, watching your kids, that's one hour you can take a little shower <laughs> and enjoy it for yourself. So, um, yeah, just do that. And, and yes, like to your point, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing it and you're not alone. And yes, whoever tells you it's okay and they're not struggling, they're lying. Because <laughs> everyone is struggling. So, yeah. Perfect. I will piggyback off her um, two things. One, don't trust people for social media and their Instagram because they're lying. Like, don't do that. You're not killing it. I know because I've cleaned some of y'all houses, so I know <laughs> you have help. Another thing I've learned is, is that it's okay to have help. I am going to hire, I've decided this year, I'm hiring my own company to clean my house. I don't have time to do baseboards, and I don't want to do them. And it's okay. I got the money to pay for it, not doing it. That's one. Two. I am very control freakish with my baby. My business is my baby. And I've learned this year to trust my team leads. They know mm -hmm. what to do. They know what I expect. So I'm not always on my phone. Like my phone dropped like when we first started saying. And at first my anxiety was like, but what if something's wrong? They know what to do. And trusting them and being able to walk away from that has been so beneficial for me because I'm not always worried. And then like you said, like just you can do it, girl. Like don't let you, there's a hundred reasons you can tell yourself why you can't do it. There's a hundred reasons why you feel like you're going to fail. But I, I'm a living testimony two and a half years ago. I, this business happened accidentally. It's not something I was passionate about. It's not something I read. I walked into a meeting and I walked out with a business. Mm -hmm. So you can do, I just, just keep it and get you some good mentors. Mm -hmm. Like, and surround yourself around women that don't mind sharing and pouring into you. Cause I have some great ones. And like, you know, I have some, like when I have bad days and one of my biggest ones is uh, Stephanie Singfield that owns Singfield. She's like my big sister. And I'm like, I think I'm gonna quit today. She's like, we ain't gonna quit. You want to go get some coffee? Let's have a drink and we'll talk about it. You'll be okay tomorrow. Okay. Get you some, a group of women that are encouraging and, and they're in the same field. And so you guys have something in common. And so they know what it feels like when the client has walked away or you got a new client, you don't know what to do. So that's, that's my advice. But more so than that, you can do it. Keep them fed and nobody dies. You're okay. It's a win day. <laughs> I did know all of your advice. Um, and I will, I'll add two more. Um, healthy boundaries. Yeah. Um, and the boundaries, realizing that you may think they're selfish, but they're not. They're caring for yourself and your needs and realizing that, um, identifying it. And then, um, and healthy boundaries too, not just with yourself, with your in-laws, like in regards to your comment about asking for help, like also that comes with boundaries, like how much help and what kind of help and is it for you or for them? Um, and I think just kind of boundary setting. Um, and then the other is, uh, we were talking about this earlier, like stop apologizing so much. Um, you know, we hear a lot about mansplaining um, in the world that we live in now. Um, and, and I don't want it to get to a women's explaining scenario where we're always like, I'm so sorry I have to pick my child up, or I'm so sorry I don't want to miss this basketball game, um, or I'm running late because I dropped my kid off. No, you know, show up and be confident. Um, and we all are juggling everything, and we don't need to be apologizing for those things. We need to be confident in that and, you know, be thankful that we're in these positions and um, just yeah, continue to rock it and do well with it. Um, apologizing is the last thing that we need to be doing. Um, like you said, we're healthy. We're showing up. Our kids are still alive. The laundry may be not done, but hey, we're doing it. Um, so those would be kind of my two additions to everyone else, like I said. That was a great, yeah, that was especially that was the great. boundaries. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm learning that in therapy right now. We don't have to put that there. But I'm still learning the boundary thing. Like, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's hard, especially when you haven't done it before. But it's so fulfilling. It mm -hmm. is, so I, um, especially when you have a new business and you, you have clients. And so, like, my thing is my office hours are 
Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, and then you get somebody calling on Saturdays or calling after yeah. hours. And when you're growing, you want to answer. Yeah. You want to. And then I've had to learn that I will always be on if mm-hmm. I never take that time to give back to myself. Mm-hmm. So now if you call without that, with the hours, the voicemail tells you somebody will come take you back on Mondays. Mm-hmm. And you have to find that time, even if it's going to the mm-hmm. bathroom without your child on your leg, oh, yeah. by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't go 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 open the door yeah. like it's nothing. Yeah. Be like, <laughs> come on now. Excuse me. Give me a second. But we need that time so that we can continue to show up and show out. Because if you don't have anything in you, you can't orient to anybody else. That's right. Well, on that note, I just want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. This has been fantastic. And I have been so encouraged. I know Leah and I have been thrilled with the opportunity to join all of you guys. And it's an honor to work alongside you. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, as you, you all know, working moms, we had to be able to fit all of us in at the same time, um, and it was quite the juggle, but we do have Gisela and Sharon uh, along with Leah and I on here. So if anyone has any questions or any comments, we are here um, just to have a couple minutes of conversation live and in person. Um, try to juggle. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Hi, Louise. I'm crying over here. I feel like a bad husband. How can I get more power? I got to be a woman. That's impossible. So, um, so my question would be, what, what would you say to a younger um, version of yourselves, right? Like maybe some younger girls that are watching, um, you know, they don't know what you guys know now, um, that they're thinking of either uh, opening their own business or having children and they're just scared and, and, you know, maybe not the right timing. What would you say to, to these women? That's a great question. I'm gonna let either Sharon, Leah or Gisela, any of y'all want to jump in? Okay, so I guess I can. Uh, I will, so the, I guess, younger version of myself, I will tell her, you got this. Um, You're doing a great job. Just keep going at it. Um, Because when you're younger, yes, you do have a lot of, I guess, insecurities and and a lot of questions about the future that you just don't know. But hey, nobody else knows that, right? Um, So just do your best and, and be happy with that. Um, and then you're going to get really far. And then for all those young women out there, um, if you're looking into starting a business and you're unsure, hey, do it. It's just, just rip it like a band-aid, like Melissa <laughs> said. Um, you know, just do it because it's never going to feel like the right timing. Um, things, same for kids. You know, if, if you feel like you're ready to have kids, but you're just second, you know, guessing yourself. I mean, like everything in life, you're never really ready until you're doing it. And then you have to step up your game and then get it done and, and, and do it right. So um, I think that's usually, you know, if you keep waiting and waiting, life is just going to pass you by. So just, just do what you got to do today. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely want to piggyback off that because I am uh, myself starting a business and I had my child unexpectedly, but she has been the best gift I've ever had. And she's actually been the push for me. Um, And I don't do everything perfect every day. And I still learned, I'm still learning like, and it's just important to have a community around you, like my family, friends, you ladies, it's been like, it's so important for me to have that community because without that, it's like, I would probably be in a hole somewhere crying, (laughs) like dying. But um, it's been great to have that support and that's super important as well. And if you don't have the support, finding finding your community, it doesn't have to be family, it can be someone around you, like anybody that's helping you through it. And Tron, I don't know if you're still there, if you wanna answer Tiffany's question, it's in the chat. Okay, let me check out the question. Oh my God, there are so many resources. Um, I did um, an event on Monday. Uh, I would tell you to go to um, chattanooga.gov and I think it's like back score or um, resources, the business, I can drop it in the link for you. And it just tells you um, just from 
what did all the different resources from collab to lunch to the Tennessee business development um, in Chattanooga for businesses. Um, collab is amazing. So if you need like a, a technical provider, I use them. Um, I work with Katie a lot. She's a blessing. I would tell you to, you know, get with them. There's a um, business program called Lunch that's a 10 weeks. That's for um, businesses. It's like a um, development class that will walk them through from like the very beginning to um, the end. So um, there's just so many resources. I would just say, just get on Chattanooga. Um, I'm sure it's Chattanooga.gov and go to businesses and it will it will walk you through everything and also get on collab. I, I highly recommend collab because they've been amazing to me. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> Sharon. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us today. We are just completely grateful. It, I would say that Leah and I um, and all the other moms out there that I've had so many conversations with over the last like seven, eight months. Um, this is part of what came out of that was just wanting to give space to be an encouragement um, and to let you know, like there are entrepreneurs, there are moms, there are all different types that um, we're doing so well. We're rocking this. So thank you all for joining us. I'm going to pass this to Leah just to finish us up. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for all the attendees, you'll be receiving a digital toolkit. It's providing more information on all our speakers, how you can support their businesses, as well as additional resources which, with ways that you can be an advocate um, for women's rights or women in business. And a coupon from a local woman in Chattanooga who just opened up a winery here. So you have a coupon to get you a free bottle of wine. Well, buy two, get one free um, from Paris Winery and she just opened up. So again, we thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy it. Bye.